Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, April 9th, and it is Easter Sunday. So a very happy Easter to all you folks that are celebrating Easter today, all you, all you Christians, to all you Jews, a happy Passover, to all the Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims and Shintoists and everyone else, happy whatever it is that you're happy about today. To all you atheists, I'll pray for you. And to all you worshippers of Baal and Dagon and Cthulhu and Beelzebub, I think you're late for a meeting at the White House. So, it is a fine day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. A little chilly, bizarre weather. We, we had 80 degrees, I think it was, on Thursday. And now we're in the 40s. Um, I don't know, but hey... It's Easter. Spring is here. I am enjoying a uh, haunted bookshop this morning in this uh, Tim Hynek. Uh, beautiful pipe. I really, really love the work that Tim did and uh, always cherish this pipe. It's not one I smoke very often simply because it's heavy and I'm a clencher, so it's a little bit difficult to clench without getting some pain in the jaw. But uh, beautiful pipe and and I can uh, really enjoy smoking this one so as I was uh, thinking today about Easter and this is not a religious faith chat sort of thing so don't if, if you're if you're not into that sort of thing if you're if you're one of my atheist friends that I mentioned earlier I will pray for you but um, don't don't turn it off because we're going to be talking about logic. I was thinking of some of the criticism. So I am I'm Roman Catholic, and I've always uh, observed Lent, and then Lent comes to an end. Then it's Easter, and Easter is a great celebration for most Christians. Uh, I think all Christians. Uh, it's the high point of the liturgical calendar. You know, it's not Christmas. Christmas is great and all, but, but Easter is really what it's all about because this is celebrating the resurrection of Christ, the, the, the fulfillment of, of the promise, uh, the, the opening of the gates of heaven, and the, uh, the reparation for our sins. So it's a good time. You know, it's, it's, it's something really important in, in the life of a Christian. So it really is the high point of the religious year if you will. And I've heard, you know, over the years, uh, I've always been in university circles, you know, that I, I grew up very, very isolated in a sense, because I grew up at a time when, uh, when you'd meet someone, you wouldn't ask them where they lived, you'd ask them what parish they attended, you know, that that's how, um, isolated I was in terms of religion. Uh, everybody I knew was Catholic, with the exception of a few Jews that, that lived in the area. And uh, some of them I, I got to know quite well as a young child because uh, I would um, deliver papers for them, things like that. So anyway, but that was my, my background was this Judeo-Christian bubble. And then when I went off to college, I was immediately exposed to all sorts of things. You know, one of, one of my earliest memories of college was meeting a bunch of Hare Krishnas uh, who were incredibly happy people. And I thought, wow, that's interesting. Uh, and uh, I didn't, I can't say I got to know them very well because there was still a sense of uh, fear in me about, about such things, you know. But, but over time, I, I learned to appreciate other religions. And it, it's sort of been a a hobby of mine, if you will, to, to sort of try to understand, you know, do comparative religious studies. I took a few courses in it. I've read quite a bit about it. And you know, it's just something I enjoy thinking about and thinking about the commonalities between the various beliefs. And, uh, yeah, I've come to the conclusion, and it's not one that's necessarily condoned by my church, but I've come to the conclusion that there's got to be some common underlying truth to all of this. And we'll say no more about that. But 
what I wanted to talk about was some of the criticisms that I've heard uh, over the years and even this year regarding this particular time of year and other major uh, religious holidays. And, you know, a lot of people will criticize Lent. You know, Lent is a time when we do things that are difficult for us. You know, we might we might sacrifice something. We might say, well, I'm not going to smoke a pipe for Lent, uh, which I never do because I know I will fail miserably at it. Uh, we might say, well, I'm going to read the Bible during Lent every day, or I'm going to read a um, book on theology, and I'm going to finish it during those 40 days. Uh, we might say, I'm going to pray more. You know, it, it, it doesn't have to be that you're sacrificing something. And, you know, the old images that, oh, I'm not going to eat candy for Lent. And, things. and you know, when you're a little kid, that, that's what you do, because that's easy for kids to do. Well, it's not easy for them to do, but it's something they can conceive of in terms of a sacrifice. But as, as we grow older, we start to try to do things that will help us grow spiritually. And the criticism is, well, you know, God doesn't care if you eat meat on Friday. God doesn't care if you're, you know, oh, well, and I, I heard that, uh, that and this has come up on a Friday live stream a couple of times now, in, in I don't know, Louisiana or somewhere, there's a, a parish that allows you to eat alligator on Fridays, and that's meat. I, I guess, you know, there's, uh, when St. Patrick's Day falls on a Friday, some bishops will say, well, it's okay to eat uh, corned beef on, on this Friday in Lent. Okay, you know, is, is that something to criticize? Well, I don't know anyone that believes that God told us not to eat meat on Friday. I don't know anyone that believes that God told us to sacrifice something for 40 days prior to Easter. It's something we choose to do to develop ourselves. You know, nobody says to uh, somebody that meditates every day, well, you know, does God care if you meditate every day? No, it's something they do for themselves. It, it's, not, it's not that it's been handed down from on high. So my desire to better myself, to, to suffer uh, in order to experience something different, uh, that, that's, that's me. That's not something that I've been forced to do. That's not something that, you know, the, uh, the mysterious God in, in the sky is, is saying, if you don't do this, you're going to go to hell. It's, it's something I choose to do. So that criticism of, of belief is, is usually not a very good one. You know, it's not a logical one. And I love talking to what I'm going to call a good atheist, and I know a few of them. There's someone that's thought deeply about their lack of faith. And they understand it, and they decided that, you know, from a logical perspective, this is what I believe. But they do not try to evangelize <laughs> the believers. They say, you know, that's your choice. You've, you've come to a conclusion that that's what you believe. This is what I believe. Or don't believe. It's hard to talk about because belief and faith are so interconnected. But no, I enjoy talking to those people because I get to, I get to explore it, you know, and, and they get to maybe explore what I believe a little bit. And, and that's good. I don't like talking to atheists that tell me I'm stupid. Because well, that doesn't go anywhere. You know, understand what you're criticizing first, I guess is, is the point. Another criticism that, that you hear a lot is, well, this, you know, Easter is just uh, a reimagination of ancient fertility festivals or uh, the, the, the Druids celebrating the vernal equinox or something like that. It, it corresponds to those things in time, you know, it's, it's, it's at that time, but that's probably because there was already stuff going on at that time, and, 
you know, the Christians came along and said, well, we should do something too, but we can't worship those things. What are we going to do? Well, you know, let's have a celebration of new life and the new life that was brought to us by Christ. And then the, the criticism comes along, well, obviously that, that's all made up because you don't know what day Jesus was resurrected. You just picked the, the day of the, the around the vernal equinox or whatever. Uh, same thing with Christmas. You don't know that Christ was born on, on that day. That, that, that's the, uh, the Saturnalia. That's the Feast of, of Lights or whatever. Yeah, I don't know many people that are still celebrating Saturnalia. Uh, if you do, um, you might want to get some help. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, as if I offended any Saturnalia celebrators. <laughs> no, yeah, we don't know the exact day, but we've decided that it's important to commemorate that day. Even though we don't know when it is, we still commemorate it. We, we, it's an important part of our life. Again, not handed down from on high. There's nothing in the Bible that says you must celebrate Christmas, you must celebrate Easter. It's not like that. It's something that we have decided to do because it enriches our lives, because it keeps us attuned to that sort of cycle of the year and the role that God has played in that cycle. So you can't really criticize, you know, or can get a bit silly, but you can't criticize something simply because that something is not 1000% logically precise and grounded in fact, because it's not, it's, it's faith. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that. We lose sight of that looking at other faiths, too. This is not just a believer versus non-believer thing, but, you know, well, look at Hinduism. You know, Hinduism's crazy. No, no, I don't mean that really, but it's got all these gods and demons and, and avatars and everything. When I think of Hinduism, And again, I mean no offense by this. I'm, I'm just merely talking about other religions. I'm not criticizing them in any way. When I think of Hinduism, I think of like a comic book because there's all these characters moving in and out and everything. And it's fascinating. It's a, it's a deep, uh, very deep history and, and, and incredible um, mythology, if I can use that word, around uh, the Hindu beliefs. Very complex. And uh, I've, I've tried this sort of figure it out in some way, you know, just to sort of get an idea of what the overall story is. And I can't, it, it's too complex. At least I can in the time that I've been able to allot to it. So, you know, it's easy for me to sit here and say, well, you know, that's all made up. That's a bunch of, of silly nonsense. It's about the myth. I even use the word mythology. Uh, no, it's what those people have chosen to believe, and belief doesn't always necessarily have to be grounded in real-world fact. Okay, let's, let's take this to another level. Um, let's look at science. Is science always grounded in real-world fact? And we've talked about this in the past. Absolutely not. There's more belief in science than, than in religion. And I'm a scientist. I'm a card-carrying scientist. So I'm allowed to say this. You might remember, if you're not a scientist from your school days, that there are scientific laws and scientific theories. What are the laws? Well, the laws are the things that we are pretty darn certain are real, like Newton's laws of motion. We are pretty certain that in space, if you apply a force to a body, it will move, it will accelerate proportionally to that force and its mass. That's 
you know, mathematically holds together pretty well, and you can you can do experiments to prove it. And yeah, that's that's a real fact, it's solid. It's not a belief. But then beyond the realm of laws, there are theories, and theories are things like. Um, just to keep it in the realm of physics. Um, the universe is so big, had a beginning, and it's been expanding since that beginning. Um, and at some point, it will reach a critical point where the forces all balance out and it will either stop or it will fall back in on itself. That's a theory. And, you know, there's evidence for it, but it's not the same thing as force equals mass times acceleration. It's not the same thing. It's a theory, and we find holes in it all the time. There's recently been uh, some reports from one of the new telescopes that the density of galaxies doesn't quite make sense. There's, there's some clustering that can't be explained by the sort of standard model of the Big Bang. Uh, so theories get challenged all the time, and they should. Beliefs get challenged all the time, and they should. Laws should always be looked at, but they're less susceptible to change. And I'm sorry, I've got an alarm going off here that I will turn off. Sorry about that. So really, faith can be thought of in, in similar terms. You know, in faith, we have things that, you know, we, I think that even the atheist would agree to. We're here. We exist. Right? We, we were created, whatever that process of creation may have been. And then we have theories. Um, I was created by God. Personally, he actually sat down and said, I'm going to make Cain Rudd Piper. That's a theory. I have faith in that theory. And that's what leads me to celebrate Easter. So I guess the message is when, when, first off, if you're someone critical of faith, be fair about it. You know, don't critic, don't snipe at it because oh, the, you know, yeah, that that day is the same day that the Druids. Don't don't do that because it doesn't help anything. It doesn't actually help your side. It doesn't help your argument. You're pointing out things, but they're things that. The people of faith already know about it, and they don't have a problem with it. Likewise, if you're a person of faith, don't just assume that another faith is wrong because it's foreign to you. Um, and I'm not saying that you should accept it, I'm just saying that you should respect it. And when you're looking at people that don't have faith, respect their right to, to feel that way, and, and the fact that they have hopefully come to that belief in a logical framework and pray for them. Yeah. Criticism is a funny thing. Um, there are places where it makes a lot of sense and there are places where it's just the, the last thing you want to do. And uh, I think when it comes to faith and lack of faith, being critical is not the right way to go being understanding and accepting and uh, you know having a sense of live and let live is is probably the better path well that's that so today is Easter so I don't have a lot planned um, other than eating something Eastery I don't know what we're going to have for Easter dinner. Um, my wife has at least three things either defrosted or purchased from the, the store that we might have. I, she's been going through debating whether we want to have ham or a pork roast or roast beef. Or, so. I don't know, there's going to be a lot of meat this week is what I guess is the bottom line. And I'm probably just going to take it easy today and not do much of anything. It's been a uh, 
rough couple of weeks at work, as I've mentioned, and uh, I, I took Friday off for Good Friday observance, and pretty much was a vegetable yesterday. And I'm probably going to do the same today, so that on Monday I can get back to work and uh, be a bit refreshed. Seems like there was something else I wanted to update you on, but I cannot remember what it is. Oh, I meant to bring this down with me and I forgot I left it upstairs. So if you watched, I didn't have a live stream this past Friday because of Good Friday, but if you watched the live stream two weeks ago, we were talking about movies and I made the mistake of saying I had never seen The Shining. And my buddy Couch, um, he said in the comments, okay, Everybody send Mike a copy of The Shining. And I immediately said, no, don't do that. I'll find it, you know, because because you, you all are far too generous. And of course, within a few days, I got a package from Amazon and it was a DVD of The Shining. I don't know who sent it. It was anonymous. Um, but thank you, whoever did send it. And please don't send any more. <laughs> I had this image of like, you know, five or six DVDs of The Shining all stacked up and I'd have to do like a Shining giveaway or something. Yeah, I've never seen it and I haven't watched it yet. My wife tells me I have to wait until she goes to Pittsburgh to watch it because she's afraid of it. Uh, I could watch it down here. I have, um, I have a DVD player that I could run into the computer system and watch it on my large monitor here uh, with headphones so that she doesn't hear it. But then I'd be sitting in the dark basement watching The Shining, and I don't know if I want to do that. Anyway, my hope is that I'll be able to watch it sometime before next Friday and report on it at, on the Friday live stream. We shall see. We shall see. But again, thank you to uh, whoever kindly sent that. So we will be back this coming Friday uh, with a live stream, usual time, 8 p.m. And with that, I think I'm going to uh, let you all get back to your Sunday and enjoy your Easter or whatever else you might be enjoying. I hope you found something valuable in this. Again, I wasn't trying to do a, uh, a faith chat or anything like that. I just wanted to talk about the logic of being critical of others. So with that, my friends, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.